Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to resume with our presentation. Please welcome to the stage Maria Koroleva. All right, welcome back everyone. Seems like not everybody made it back from lunch. Did we lose some people? <laughs> Maybe half the people? <laughs> so once again, my name is Maria Koroleva. I will be your MC for the second half of our day today. So hello everyone. How are we all feeling? Are we, are we well fed? Feeling good, ready for a nap maybe? Okay, we'll, we'll, try to keep, we'll try to keep the energy going. So as you heard from Patty this morning, I am a two-time Olympian in synchronized swimming. I currently work at Visa on the global co-brand development team, but I've only been there for two months, so don't ask me too many questions about payments. Maybe in a couple years, I'll be a little bit more versed. And I also coach part-time and blog as well. I think Patty mentioned that in the morning. So, I don't know if you guys know this, but synchronized swimmers train eight to 10 hours a day, so it's pretty much a full-time job if you've if you reach the elite level. So I remember after lunch, so like this time for us, was always the my least favorite part of the day was to dive back into a cold pool after you've been fed and you really just wanna, you know, you're hitting that food coma, you just wanna take a nap, but you gotta go get back in the pool. So if you're feeling a little tired, just know you don't need to jump into a pool. We are dry. We are in this nice room, and we're going to be good. So we're going to try to keep our energy up and, and get through these sessions. Sound good? Awesome. So our next session will be all about cybersecurity. And I know we've been talking a lot about this. It's kind of a, been a hot topic. So we'll be talking about how banks and fintechs are rapidly adopting to the rapidly adopting the cloud to innovate, modernize, and transform their technology and services. So we have three speakers today. We have Kristen Hott from Amazon Web Services. We have Tom Demchak and Bart Bailey from D DXC Technology, and they will help guide us through some of these topics on cybersecurity. So Kristen will go up first, so let's help welcome Kristen to the stage. <laughs> I was truthfully wondering what my walk-up song was going to be. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Um, anyways, I'm Kristen Hott. It's very nice to be here with each of you. Um, I have been with AWS for over five and a half years now and spent my greater part of five years um, working on our security assurance team where I did everything from when I started working directly with our third party auditors on our SOC and our PCI audit, which is obviously very relevant to the payment space, um, as well as the financial services industry. I then moved into a role where um, I worked on some of the key controls that we were automating across our organization. And then my last big project was um, redesigning how do we engage with our service teams as we um, develop so many services so quickly, how do we ensure that they're integrating the proper controls into the design and development of those new services and new features. So now I'm um, uh, doing business development and financial services, but I specialize in security compliance and helping customers take a lot of the lessons learned that we had at AWS across our security organization and across all of our service teams and apply it um, and implement it in their organization. So today, we're gonna go rapid fire through some security topics as well as talking about how customers in the industry are using AWS and would love to chat with any of you afterwards to learn more about what you're doing. So AWS has had a, a lot of adoption from the industry and um, I've really had the privilege to work with a lot of these customers recently, whether they're global insurers or um, fintechs or in the capital market space or they're you know, these large global banks. And what we've really focused on is a few key areas. The first one being availability and disaster recovery. This is something that these large institutions care a lot about because us as consumers rely on the avail availability of those products. So 
someone like DTCC, who is a systemically important market utility, must achieve extremely high availability. And you can see their manager, managing director saying, the financial markets expect DTCC to be there without fail every single day. AWS provides the multiple services and multiple options for multi-region resiliency. They're well beyond what we could do on-prem. So I've spent a lot of time with DTCC really documenting what are all of these failure scenarios that could take place and simulating them in their environment to ensure that they're able to achieve that availability that they're talking about. So how do they do that? Well, at a very basic level, let's talk about the AWS regions. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the concept. We have 22 geographical regions, three more coming on um, in the next year. Um, and within every region, we have availability zones. So we have these multiple availability zones that are all physically separated and fault tolerant, and they're composed of multiple data centers. And those multiple data centers are also physically separated. And so this gives customers of ours to be able to architect in a way to either replicate across the different availability zones, so should some sort of physical um, or un, you know, expected disaster happen, they can continue to operate um, across those availability zones. Or, like DTCC commented on, they can even architect across the multiple regions. Um, so it allows them to really achieve that availability and those RPO and RTO objectives that they couldn't achieve in an on-prem environment. And What's really important for everyone to keep in mind, and this applies to availability and disaster recovery, but it also applies to everything else that you're doing in the cloud, and, that, and that's the shared responsibility model. So one of the greatest benefits of the cloud is that AWS or the other cloud providers take on a lot of those responsibilities for you that you used to have to do in an on-prem environment, right? But you really need to invest in making sure that as you use those services, you're configuring them appropriately um, for the sensitivity of data that you are putting into the cloud. So let's talk about another concept, which is regulation. Surprisingly, regulation has become a big catalyst for financial institutions to move to the cloud. We, you know, we had um, Bob Taylor from Grata talk about how um, KYC and uh, AI, um, AML regulation is something that's really hard for these financial institutions to meet because of the amount of data that they're having to analyze. And we have FINRA who regulates the market security, uh, market securities in the US saying, we can be far more secure in the cloud and achieve a higher level of assurance at a much lower cost. And what's also awesome is in, they're achieving that assurance that they're looking for but they're also being able to do uh, monitor fraud, monitor abuse, detect insider trading better than they ever could have before, um, even as the amount of um, data they're ingesting on a daily basis increases. Um, they talk about how they've now ingested up to 135 billion market events on a given day. Um, that's not normal for them, but um, as that number continues to increase um, and things like CAT, um, take, they take on that responsibility of the consolidated audit trail, um, they have to be able to um, adapt and, and um, scale appropriately. So um, they also, in their security processes, have had to do the same thing, and they've been able to reduce their hardening times from three to four weeks to three to four minutes and removing those manual processes along the way. So AWS offers our customers a number of different assurance um, audit reports that you can leverage to verify that all the things that we say we do, we are doing, and we're doing them effectively. And this is a huge benefit to any customer um, because they can get that ongoing insight into our, our controls. Um, but like I said, it's also the regulation that our customers are subject to, like FRTB and KYC and AML that are driving them to the cloud. And we produce a lot of documentation that you can go and download from our website um, to determine, okay, when I'm using particular services, how can I use them in a way that'll help me comply with that regulation? 
We also spend a lot of time engaging with regulators. Um, we have an entire team dedicated to that. Um, what I think is really cool about our approach there is when we engage with regulators, we do it in a very similar way that we do with our customers, which is educating them and training them on the cloud so that when they are um, you know, modifying or updating policy, they are doing so in a way that takes into consideration how the cloud operates since it is different um, from an on-prem environment. And then that team also focuses on should there be um, policy changes coming up, how, how do we respond to them um, and collaborate with other providers to ensure that they allow financial institutions to be able to leverage the cloud. And then we offer a compliance center, which is an incredible resource for fintechs because you can go in and essentially click on a country and understand who the financial regulator is in that country and um, are there any unique requirements um, related to the cloud that they need to know about and then it'll allow you to dive deeper. So I always just like to include this so that you can go and check that out and see if it's a helpful resource for you as you um, sell into other countries or into global institutions who want to know about how you, um, how you meet every single country's law and regulation. So the third thing, and this is my favorite thing because it's what I do, security. Security is um, not only a benefit from the cloud, but it's really what we've seen um, initiate the conversation with these large financial institutions because the security threat landscape is always moving um, and it's moving quickly. Um, and in a traditional environment, which most of these large organizations still operate in in some way, shape, or form, there is a lack of um, visibility, right, into um, where their resources and data are, into how, where they're moving, where is that data moving, and how is it protected. Um, and as the volume of data that they have continues to increase, that lack of visibility makes it really hard to know what, where, and when to protect that data. And then the other thing is the lack of automation. Um, or just the difficulty of automating um, in an on-premise environment because it doesn't necessarily have the interoperability inter 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 that you see with APIs in the cloud. Um, so these institutions are really trying to figure out, okay, if we can have um, a more automated environment and remove these humans from certain processes, we can move towards being agile as well as being secure. Um, and when I was, I spent a lot of time with the service teams at AWS, I quickly learned that developers don't love to talk about security and they absolutely do not want to talk to you about compliance. <laughs> so I personally, when I was doing audit from the very beginning, I had to rethink how, um, how I introduced myself to these service teams so that I became relevant and important to them. And I had to, I essentially was talking about how, well, if we are figuring out how to move upstream into the design of your service, the things that I request from you down the road, like evidence of for a certain audit, will continue, will start to decrease. And should something um, happen in, in your service, um, you would be responsible for obviously end to end the ownership of that security. So we really instilled that ownership into our service teams. Um, and as a result, a lot of what we saw is these service teams started to develop their own security services to do a lot of the manual tasks that our compliance teams were asking them to do. And a lot of these services that AWS offers, whether it's to you know, KMS for managing keys or IAM for managing access or guard duty for threat detection, a lot of those were actually built for protecting the internal AWS environment. And then the success drove us to offer them to our customers. So I always um, want to ensure that you are aware of the different security services that we offer because it makes it a lot easier for you to secure your environment. So what does, um, what does this concept of automation look like in the cloud? Well, um, I really like this diagram because 
it, um, each of these services, like I said, were used for our own internal compliance um, and by our compliance teams before they became public services to our customers. And so if you look at this, um, let's see if I, there we go. So you have someone who initiates um, a, a deployment, right? And you can use in your code repository, start building up these automation rules that are essentially, they could be a security rule, a compliance rule, whatever you call them. But maybe it's something like, I want to ensure that every, um, I'm always using a customer managed KMS key in all of my deployments. And you can have that check as part of every single deployment. And should that be determined to not be in place, you can use Lambda to roll back um, or create other auto, auto remediation rules um, or alerting as you wish. Um, and then you can use one of our newer security services called Security Hub to essentially get insight into, okay, what are all the rules that were checked for every single deployment? Um, and really dive into, okay, well, was it, you know, was it compliant at this point in time? Because I have an auditor who has requested a specific sample. Um, or you can use it in a way that's this real-time monitoring dashboard of, okay, there was um, a configuration change in an environment. I see that there was a non-compliant rule that maybe it wasn't a high risk, so you didn't roll back, but you still want someone to look into it and respond to it. Um, and in that compliance dashboard, it's also, it can integrate just like most of our services with other third-party tools. Um, so things like Splunk, if you're using Splunk, or um, Slack for communications across your organization, um, the, the options are endless there. And so end to end, what this looks like, and um, I spend a lot of time with our customers helping them um, implement a process like this across their organization to, to minimize risk and minimize the, the risk of humans doing certain things that um, might lead to inconsistencies or errors. Um, and so, what, oh, sorry. What this looks like is um, it starts all the way down here with something what we call a, a well-architected review. This can be performed in many different ways, but we do have one that's custom for using AWS. Um, so that'll help you do a review of your architecture. And using infrastructure as code, right, you can do these reviews on really small scale. So every time you um, make a change, you can have your compliance as code scanning, um, like I was describing earlier. And every change that you make can go into a code repository, which you can do an ongoing audit against. Um, and then you can have this self-service code catalog for um, your business teams and your development teams to leverage so that every deployment that goes out is then um, consistent and you know where that code is being used across your organization and you know it's meeting your architectural and your compliance requirements and you can do that ongoing monitoring against them. So let's talk about the fourth thing, fintechs. One of the greatest drivers um, for a lot of these financial institutions to move to the cloud because they are truly defining how, how are we going to um, better meet our cust the in customers expectations, right? Um, so while um, you know, we have customers like Monzo Bank or New Bank who now last week they came out saying they now have 15 million customers yet they're relatively new banks that were fully born in the cloud. Um, and a lot of their success is coming, I'm sorry, I'm terrible at this thing. A lot of their success is coming from these different areas of um, these improving that customer experience. So things like building a technology ecosystem so that we can, as consumers, integrate um, all of our different um, activities that we have going on with different banks into a single platform, right? Or um, have these personalized experiences with our banks so that we're getting more personalized recommendations based on our own portfolio. Um, so I see a lot of these fintechs here today, and I'm, I get really excited to get to talk to each of you because when customers come to me and ask, who could we use for 
you know, automating a certain aspect of our security or who could we be using for our AML or um, our FRTB compliance programs. Um, and I will get to recommend them. And so I would love if anyone wants to come and talk to me about what you're doing and if you're using AWS or considering using AWS, please don't hesitate to come and talk to me. Um, and this is just uh, the different opportunities that I think open banking um, provides to our customers um, and the different business models that we're seeing some of our customers take. So building an API marketplace um, so that you are able to connect with customers with a wide choice of applications, right? Or being an aggregator so that the customer can experience um, and access their banking activities in a central location, um, or even building these partnerships. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about our partnership program here in a couple slides. Um, so I just wanted to put this up here as just a, um, areas where we're seeing open banking really allow fintechs to move into. And these are a few of our customers that are doing really cool things. So Starling Bank was a born in the cloud bank. Um, there's a great video about how um, their CEO started um, Starling Bank because she had spent about three decades um, at um, UBS and a couple of other firms. And she basically said, I really want to build a bank in the right way. And I want this bank to be a technology company and not a, a bank. And so um, she built Starling Bank in um, I think it was less than a year, um, and it was all focused on um, promoting these fintech partnerships. And Monzo took a similar approach where they wanted to um, make sure, although they weren't regulated and required to do have open APIs, they wanted to create these open APIs so that they could um, you know, partner with various fintechs and ensure that their account holders could access their account wherever they wanted to. Um, and then we're also seeing these um, larger institutions like DBS in Singapore um, really focus on creating this FinTech sandbox um, for different innovation um, and experimentation across their organization. So what do you do with all this information that I just threw out to you so quickly? Well, I really have seen a lot of um, organizations think about moving into the cloud, whether they're small or large, and forget about the aspect of the cloud is still relatively new. Um, but prioritize training your teams. Um, we are actually seeing regulators ask about um, your training programs and processes to ensure that um, your developers are thinking about security and understand security of the cloud. Um, so we have a number of different um, security and auditor focused training programs um, that you can leverage and a lot of our um, startup programs will give you credits for free training and certification programs. The second thing I would recommend is if you haven't yet used our well-architected tool, um, I highly recommend just trying it out for one thing and it's completely free um, and it allows you to document a lot of the things that an auditor or a regulator would come and ask you, but you're documenting them in a way that actually enables your development teams to make the right security decisions in the design of whatever they're building. Um, I think it's really important that we figure out how to fill that translation gap between you know, the compliance risk audit stakeholders and the developers, and this tool is um, something that you can leverage to do that. Um, there's different pillars all about operational performance of your applications, the resiliency of your applications, um, as well as the cost optimization, which is um, obviously an incredibly important aspect. And then where can you go to learn more about security of AWS? There's three distinct tools that I would recommend. The first is AWS Artifacts. So anytime we have a new audit report that's released, we automatically make it available to all of our customers directly in the console. You can go and download them whenever you need um, and read through them. It's real riveting content, let me tell you. And then we have our Compliance Center, which I mentioned earlier, where you can drill into each country's financial um, you know, regulator and their view on the cloud. Um, and then we have a new uh, aspect of our service team documentation called um, a security chapter, essentially. 
and um, we're really working to make sure that this is available for every single one of our services um, because of what a lot of our financial services customers have asked for, which is a custom shared responsibility model for each of our services and getting deeper insight into what does that unique service do um, to secure their service and what are the unique configurations that you would need to put in place should you want to use the service. And then my last recommendation is if you um, are selling or integrating with financial services organizations, um, look into our financial services competency program. Uh, a lot of the um, banks that I work with rely on the competency program as just like a first validation of a cloud-based solution. I think um, someone earlier asked the question of what what would you invest in if you had a million dollars? Well, I think if I were to invest in something, it would be a company that could automate the verification of the security and sure compliance, but primarily security of a cloud-based solution because as we start to build these ecosystems of technology providers, um, the, the number of suppliers that you're relying on as an organization continues to grow. Um, and right now, most of these organizations do manual assessments. So um, this is still yet a manual assessment that we perform of these providers, um, but we're taking a lot of strides to identify areas where we can automate that assessment. So please come and talk to me afterwards. And now we're gonna to talk to DXC, who has built a really great, I mean, tons of different solutions on AWS.